Well, we're um, looking around for our strawberry. We went to this strawberry pick your own place in Mennonite a number of years back, and uh, we think we found it. So, um, anyways, we've got a coffee. Um, today, while I'm on the road here, I want to talk about something. I was going to make a video last night, but I was running out of time, and uh, it's been brought to our attention through some of our subscribers. Thank you very much, by the way, and sending your information through uh, two different sources now about the uh, blight that's on the potatoes, apparently, down in the United States. There's an outbreak. Um, for people that may not be any, you know, have no idea what I'm talking about, blight is uh, a disease that plants and uh, get. In this particular case, it's affecting the uh, nightshade family, which includes, like, potatoes, uh, tomatoes, and... I, nightshade family also includes peppers and I think okra as well, but I haven't heard anything about it affecting okra. them or not. And they grow a lot of okra down in the southern states as far as I know. But anyways, I'm not sure at this point, okay, geographically where in the states we're talking, how big this is. I still have yet to look that up. They um, uh, said from Maine to Ohio. Maine to Ohio. It's mostly the eastern area. Eastern, northeastern area at this point. Um, this is a fungus, right? It's a, a spore. Yeah, yeah. fungus. Now, uh, if anybody wants to do some research on Wikipedia, I'm almost sure you'll find it. Look up the uh, potato famine in Ireland in uh, the 1840s. Uh, it was a, this is what happened. It was potato blight. There was an outbreak. And um, anyways, they uh, the blight destroys the, the plant itself. But not only that, but it also actually destroys the uh, tubers. So even if you were to uh, say if you're halfway through your season and um, you, you get this blight and it ruins your plants or whatever, you're, you could still lose all of your potatoes even if you cut the plants and then start harvesting because it actually rots them. So, um, now, I guess this can be dealt with with a fungicide, okay? Uh, my wife's been doing some research about it. And uh, the only concern that I personally have, I asked my wife last night while she was researching this. Um, okay, it's fair enough to say that, yeah, fungicide can deal with this, but unless you're planning for this sizable outbreak, is there enough fungicide to go around? Part of the problem also is that the fungicide can uh, generally prevent it, but once you have it on your crops, it only slows it down. It can't okay. completely get rid of it, and you have to keep reapplying it every week. So, um, yeah, so you're looking at how many applications of this exactly. fungicide. Exactly. And um, because it's hitting so early, uh, the plants are uh, barely setting fruit yet. Like, example, our potato plants, anybody in roughly zone 5, their plants are just starting to flower now. They won't be ready to yeah. harvest for a few more months. And as I've shown you in a few of our videos, like ours have flowered for, what, maybe three weeks now? And, um, you know, we pulled up a plant maybe three or four weeks ago, and they were marble size. I'm going to guess they're about pinball size. Um, maybe a golf ball by maybe, now. Maybe that big now. Um, I, I did, after I was informed of this, just out of curiosity, I went and had a good look at the plants themselves, you know, really uh, scoped them out. Um, we're on the road here, we're just kind of going back. Anyway, um, I, uh, I found a couple of leaves that looked suspicious to me, and I uh, showed them that, no, that's not what it was. Um, if you want to get some pictures, it'd be really easy to find on Google. Just type in potato blight and uh, click on the pictures and you'll get all kinds of references to that. I can put some links up, but basically uh, you get a thick white mold that starts to grow on the leaves. Usually it starts on the underside of the leaves. You also, uh, you'll notice um, like a funny green or a brown circle pattern start on the tops of the leaves. Uh, that's usually the first thing people notice. And then they'll start turning black and the stems will start turning black and they'll start falling down. And, and a lot of this is caused by excessive moisture? Is that what? Yeah, c cool wet weather. Cool, and, and we've had a lot of that. Yeah, year. we have. That's what they're calling it the summer of rain. Yeah. Um, they have been saying that if we get a real hot spell, it'll help to slow it down. Um, right. Because it needs the damp, the cool, damp moisture in order to, to breed and travel. Yeah. It, it travels on air. Um, so a lot of the cool, the storms, when you're getting the, all the heavy rain and the winds, the, that's actually helping, the wind helps to spread it. We have a subscriber in uh, Michigan that uh, comments regularly, and uh, Michigan Snow Pony is the username. Um, I haven't heard anything from her. Was she the one that sent, did she send us? No, okay. no. Maybe uh, 
if she's watching, she might be able to, you know, look around your area and see if you've heard of any of this, or check your own potatoes out. You're a little more south than we are. Now, in researching this, um, we couldn't find anything as far as the Canadian uh, news goes. So, like, I'm assuming in that case that there's nothing in Canada. Now, PEI, Prince Edward Island, is, is huge for growing potatoes. Now, they, didn't they have a trouble last year? Was it frost? Um, I heard last year that a lot of the crop was destroyed because they had so much rain, the roots rotted. Okay, that's what it was. Yeah, excess of rain. Well, I, I should look into that. I'll see if I can find some news on the PEI potatoes this year. Yeah. Um, now, okay, so having said all this, how does this tie into our economic collapse? Well, once again, I mean, when it rains, it pours, literally, right? Um, you know, you think of how much potatoes are used in um, the North American market. And tomatoes, too. And tomatoes, and if they're affected, now, we, have we heard any specifics on tomatoes? Yeah, it's yeah. tomatoes and potatoes that it's are being both. found. Oh, um, and it's being, it was found being spread through some of the major nursery change, uh, changes, uh, like Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, Sears, Kmart. They were, the tomato plants were being sold from there, bringing home, and they were already sick. And this was the first time that you've heard of this happening, They right? said this is the first time that's ever happened. And, well, normally this disease doesn't appear until, you know, late summer, early fall, when the weather starts cooling off and getting wetter. Right. So, um, normally it's not a problem until the end of the growing season when most of your harvest is already done. Right. Um, but because it's appearing now, it has the potential to damage and wipe out the crops before they can be harvested. And even with this her, uh, fungicide, I mean, I could be wrong, like, don't get me wrong, I mean, I'm assuming that nobody's been stockpiling for this, so I mean, if you have to do several applications over hundreds of acres, yeah. uh, the supply of this fungicide, you know, it may not be there. If it is, you have to understand, of course, with that, the price is going to go up. So exactly. one way or the other, depending how this outbreak continues, you're looking at having a much higher cost in potato products. Yeah. And so, uh, anything made with tomatoes and potatoes will probably go up in price to compensate for the, the fertilizer that they have to buy and the time and the gas that's expensive sure. applying that as well. And what about seed for next year? Yeah. Right? Yeah. It, um, you can't save seed from crops that are contaminated with this because it can spread in the roots. Uh, if you plant uh, a seed potato that has light on it, when it grows, it will keep spreading the spores. You, you have to destroy it. Yeah. Um, you can't compost them because so many of the strains, I think there's a newer one that came out a few years back from Mexico, and it's um, not destroyed by com the heat in the compost pile. Um, it just keeps breeding. So as far as organic gardeners go, um, about your own, other than destroying the crops, um, you can try uh, copper, uh, copper sprays. There's uh, fungicides made from copper sulfate okay. that you can try. Um, they're not as effective as the commercial one, but it's about the only thing you can try. Or neem oil sometimes helps as well. Um, so, I mean, you're looking at it could be a potential, you know, pretty bad thing. It could yeah. be potentially. Not a minor. And of course, what is North America like that uses the products of uh, potatoes, uh, french fries? <laughs> as crazy as this sounds, how many pounds of french fries are sold every day in North America through our fast food chains? You know, the cost is going to go up considerably somewhere, somehow. And all I'm saying is, when you go to get products like potatoes, who do you think is going to get first dibs on it? A multi, you know, million dollar corporation like McDonald's that has a lot of hungry customers? A lot of contracts already. Sure, you know, that have to be fulfilled. I mean, you look, at who, look at who you're competing with to buy potatoes. Think of it that way. Um, they can't sell hamburgers without french fries. <laughs> I know it's a crazy point, but if you think about it, you got to look at things like that and say, hey, you know, yeah. So, um... We're certainly uh, going to keep a closer look at ours. The one thing I will say with ours, our particular potatoes this year, is that um, we haven't had any Colorado potato beetle problems at all. And I'm assuming that um, mainly that would be just because of all the rain that we've had. You know, that's just been hindering them from growing. Uh, we have had a lot of cucumber and squash beetles. Yes, now that's the other thing we've been getting a lot of. So. You know, natural disasters and economic disasters, don't they ever just seem to go hand in hand? But, uh, you know, yeah. it never ceases to amaze me, you know, like how that can happen.